Hey there, uh, welcome back. So where we left off, uh, we have our system set up where our camera knows the bounds of the room and it will smoothly follow the player along. Right now you can't see quite too much smooth because I have my smoothing set pretty high, which means that it jumps right to be where the player is as soon as it possibly can. Um, but today we're gonna be adding one of my favorite effects, which is that Zelda-like room transition, where when you go to the edge of a room, um, once you reach the edge, the camera will immediately pan up very quickly and then recenter itself on the player if it can, or at least have new boundaries. So, um, this is actually much simpler than you would think it is, so let's get started. So, very first thing I did is I made another room in Tiled, and if you want to, if you're uh, still working with the Unity um, Tile system, you can absolutely still keep doing this, um, you can just even continue your old tile map. You don't need to make a new one. You can if you want to, but I mean, you can just continue. And your room doesn't need to be exactly the same size as your first one either, which is kind of the cool thing. Um, your room can be a completely different size and that's okay. Uh, in my case, I made one that's the exact same size uh, just because I kind of have this vision in my head of a world where I have a certain number of tiles left and right, and those tiles each represent unique rooms. So that's just kind of how I want to go about it, kind of similar to the very, very original NES Zelda. So um, I have my new room, which I called Room 2, very creative, and I linked it up to my first room. And my first room here, which I called Overworld Tests, I put it at 0, 0, which puts the origin right up here. Room 2, because I know that these rooms are exactly 25 by 25, I'm just going to put that at 0 on X and then 25 on Y, which makes them sync up pretty perfectly. So that's all the setup I've done off camera. Um, this room I did a really bad job. I was kind of trying to rush as much as I possibly could. So my colliders on my body of water here are a mess. It would have been much easier if I just took the uh, simple line collider and went all the way around. That would have been so much better than what I did. This is a bad job. Don't, don't judge me. <laughs> okay, so what we want here, and let's talk about the logic. So right now our camera is bounded at this position. What we want is we want to create a really small trigger zone right here, right where we're going to switch between rooms. And when our, um, when our player touches that, we want to then tell the camera to change where its bounds are. And that change might be up or down, it might be left or right, or it might actually be both, depending on the size of your room. If you're going to a smaller size room, then your X bounds need to change as well. If you're going to a larger room, um, then both your X and your Y bounds need to change. But the, what's going to make it actually snap up the way it does in Zelda is that change in the Y, because we have our camera set to clamp to be no less than its minimum position. And if we adjust the minimum position, it's going to automatically want to compensate. And because we already created that smooth follow system, it's going to do so in a nice smooth fashion. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to create an empty game object. And I'm going to call this room transfer. All right, now I'm going to place this um, pretty much at the seam between the two rooms. So my X position, I'm gonna put it at 14, and I'm gonna put my Y position at, uh, let's do negative 0.5, because I want it inside this room. Now, I'm gonna add a component to this, and that's gonna be a nice 2D collider. So I want a box collider 2D. And if you zoom in, you can see in this light green where the default origins of that are. I wanna make this nice and small, so it's just you know barely there at all. So if you go over to the box collider, click Edit Collider, I'm going to drag this to be right at the width of the transition there, and then I'm going to make this nice and tiny. So that's going to be my, um, my trigger zone. And to make it a trigger, I'm going to click this Is Trigger. Cool. A couple more things I need to do here. Um, I need to go to my player. I need to make sure that they have the player tag. So if you just go to Tag, Player is one of the ones that's built into Unity. So just choose Player. We're going to be using that tag for some logic here in just a second. So I've got my room transfer right at the edge of the room, nice and small, and I have my player tagged. So let's make a neat script to do this um, room transfer. So we'll create a new C-sharp script. I'm going to call this um, room move, how about? 
and then I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. I didn't have Visual Studio up and running, so it's going to take me just a minute for that to get up, and I will meet you back here once that's done. Okay, so Visual Studio is up and running. So what I want to do here is I want to access a pre-built function that Unity has, and that's uh, on trigger enter 2D. So um, outside of my start or my update method, I'm just going to call uh, void on trigger, and I want to do enter 2D. And then this takes an argument of the collider and it automatically calls that collider collision. I prefer to call it something else, so I'm gonna call mine other, just because that's, I, it's just how I learned how to do it. It's, and it makes sense to me for it to be the other thing, but whatever. So I got my void on trigger into 2D, which requires a collider 2D other. Uh, now what I wanna do here, oh, I better plug in my computer here soon, so give me one second, I'll go do that. Okay, so. Uh, we've got our on trigger enter 2D. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to check the tag of the other. So I want to say if other dot compare tag and the tag I want to compare with is capital P player. So meaning we're just checking to see if it's the player that is in the trigger zone. If that's true, then what I want to do is I want to access the camera and change what the camera's offset is. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to do a few variables up here in the global variable area. First, I'm going to make a public vector2, and I'm going to call this camera change. Oop, not chance, change. I'm going to make another one, which is going to be how much I'm going to shift the player. So this is going to be a public vector2 player change, which is going to be how much I want to move the player change cheese and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a quick little um, reference to my camera movement script so this is going to be a uh, private camera movement and I'm going to call it cam or camera sure visual studio whatever you say oh no it doesn't like doing cam or camera I'm going to do cam okay anyway now I'm going to complete that reference and I'm going to say cam is equal to camera.main.get component. The component I want to get is the camera movement script. All right, cool. So I have these two offsets. I have my reference to my camera all set up. Now down here in my on trigger enter 2D, we're going to check to see if it's the player, and if it is the player, we're going to adjust in the camera movement, and this is why I made these public, the max and the min position by whatever we want to adjust it by. So, uh, in order to do that, uh, I'm going to say uh, in here, okay, sorry about that weird cut. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, I'm going to grab my camera, so I'm going to say cam dot uh, min position plus equals the camera adjust. Then I'm going to do the same thing to the max position. So cam dot max position plus equals camera change. Now, if you have a room that um, isn't square like mine, you're going to need to have two different vectors, one for the amount of change to the min position and one for the amount of change to the max position. But um, that's totally fine. Um, Okay, anyway, so I'm going to change the min position and the max position, and then I also want to move the player uh, however much I want to move them, so that adjustment. So I'm going to do other uh, dot transform dot position uh, plus equals. Can I do plus equals like this? I think I can. Player change. Oh, yep, no, I can't. You can't do that on, oh, it's because it's vector three versus vector two. Good Lord. So I'm gonna have to change my variable for player change to a vector three. There we go, that's cool. So I'm gonna save my script here really quickly. I'm gonna pop back into Unity here. I'm gonna let that compile for just a second. On my room transfer object, I'm gonna add my room move script. As soon as it's done thinking here. Cool, so I got my camera change. 
Now, my new room is 25 above the old one, but the X positions, the X min and max, don't need to change. So I really just need to adjust the Y. Now, if I were moving to the left, I'd need to adjust only the X, but not the Y, assuming that the room is the same size. And if I was moving to the right, I would just need to adjust the X again, not the Y, assuming the room's the same size. Now, I'm going to move my player forward a few spaces here. So, here is negative 0.5, so like 1, let's say 2. I'm going to move them forward two spaces on Y. Alright, cool. So, let's test this out. I'm going to hit play. Alright, I got my player that can walk around. And I'm going to approach this with trepidation. There we go. That nice, neat Zelda-like room transition. Now, that speed of the snap has to do with what you have your smoothing set to on your camera. The lower your smoothing, the more gradual a transition that would be. For example, if right now I have mine set to 0.2, if I were to change it to 0.05, something that's relatively smaller, um, actually, let's go out and go back in. So call this 0.05, and then we'll hit play. And we'll see what a change that makes. That smoothing is what makes all the changes. So if I go up here, see how that's much more slow? And if you make it a larger number, let's say 0.5, that's going to make it significantly faster. But let's just see what it does. Okay, so if I go up, do, do, do. Oh, one thing too, with the way that we did this, if you enter from like the right hand side, you stay on the right hand side when you go up. If you enter from the center, it stays on the center because we're preserving the player's X position, which is a good thing to do. All right, cool. Now, we just don't have it in the other direction. So let's take our room transfer object. Let's make that a prefab really quickly before we go any further. Um, do I have prefab? I don't have prefabs yet. Good Lord. So let's make a prefab folder. In my assets folder, I'm going to right click, choose create folder. I'm going to create a folder called prefabs. And then I'll drag my room transfer object in there. Okay. And I'm going to take my room transfer object. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to move it up so that its Y position is... Yeah, I guess just zero. There we go. And now this time, I want my camera change to be Y negative 25 and to change the player negative 2. So going down, we're going to change the camera negative 25. Hey there. I'm almost done. We're going to change the camera negative 25 and the player by negative 2. So let's test that out. Let's hit play. Okay, so we're going to go up and let's move to the next room and then move back. So again, like I said, if we're over here, we move back there. If we're here, we move up there. So, yeah, to be completely honest, like I said, this is one of my favorite 2D things. Um, so, cool, there we go. Zelda-like room transitions in like five lines of code. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Otherwise, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can um, join me on Discord where I'm chatting pretty much every day. If you learned something new today, feel free to give a like and enjoy the rest of your day.